Uh, a couple of hours ago, Israel um, bombed a uh, residential building in Beirut, in the southwest part of Beirut, that area that yesterday I described on a map as being the basically the headquarter, the headquarters of uh, the Hezbollah. And, uh, it, it, you know, so uh, they actually went there. This is after the Biden administration and pretty much everybody in the world told them, no Beirut, you can, you know, go into Lebanon, but no Beirut, you can't attack Beirut. Well, Israel decided to attack Beirut in spite of that. Uh, not, it's not really attacking Beirut. Uh, but in this case, um, they attacked a particular building uh, with uh, 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 targeting uh, Faoud Shukr, Shukr, something like that, uh, who is the number three in Hezbollah. Uh, this is a senior member, key advisor to Nasrallah, chief of staff of the military, responsible for all the attacks in the south, and number three in uh, the Hezbollah organization, the most senior person Israel has uh, targeted so far uh, in, in, uh, in the war. Uh, they are, we'll, get, we'll get to him in a minute, but they are mixed... Um, mixed uh, uh, messages in terms of the consequence of the strike. Uh, Lebanese, intelli Lebanese sources are saying, told Reuters, I guess, that he was not in the building and he had just left, so they missed him. Uh, Israeli sources initially thought he had been uh, uh, injured, uh, have since then um, uh, uh, asserted that he is indeed dead. And uh, I think if Israeli sources are saying he's dead, uh, you know, Lebanon is a place where they would know. I, 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 I'm pretty sure he's dead. So we'll see. Uh, this is a, a fog of war and all of that, all the caveats involved in that. But uh, it looks like Faoud Shukr is dead, the third in command of Hezbollah. Before we get to the consequences of this, which could be very significant, as we'll talk about in a minute, I, I want to just, I, I, this fact about Faoud uh, uh, is just so illustrative, so illustrative about American weakness and American, uh, just pathetic nature of American foreign policy and American defense doctrine. Now, you might say, well, what's Faud got to do? What, what's this guy got to do with America? It, this is number three in Hezbollah. It, it's an Israeli problem. Well, it turns out, it turns out that Faud was one of the people responsible for the bombing of the Marine Barracks in 1983. He was one of the planners of that attack. He is one, indeed, one of the original founders of Hezbollah as a military operation. Faoud has a reward on him from the United States for $5 million. Um, he is a wanted man, has been a wanted man since 1983. 1983. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's a long time ago. That's like, what is it, 41 years ago? Over the last 41 years ago, the United States has not been able to eliminate this guy? They've not been able to take him out? Uh, Israel just did it. I mean, uh, hopefully the U.S. is thanking Israel. Maybe, maybe Israel can get the, uh, the reward money. But it, it's... it's Pretty nutty. I mean, this is a guy responsible for killing 241 Marines. And I don't think that counts. If he was responsible for that, he's probably involved with uh, uh, probably involved in the bombing of the embassy. Hezbollah was not created by Israel. I don't know where you got that. I didn't say that yesterday. I might have said something else. But, you know, Israel was not, did not create Hezbollah. Hezbollah was created by the Iranians, Iran, during Israel's occupation of uh, uh, Lebanon. And it was, it was created by Iran in 1983. Uh, and, and the first act was uh, first an attack on an Israeli base. But then uh, the really first ones that had significant casualties were the attack on the American embassy and the attack on the American um, uh, uh, barracks where uh, 241 Marines were killed. So no, Israel had zero responsibility for Hezbollah. And I, Israel had some involvement in the creation of Hamas, 
We can talk about that if you want. You can ask about that. But no, no um, uh, relations to, uh, uh, it, it, in, no involvement, absolutely zero involvement in the creation of, uh, of Hezbollah. So if I said that yesterday, I was mistaken, or I misspoke because I don't, I, I wouldn't have said it um, uh, consciously. And I don't think I said it. I think you misunderstood. Anyway, uh, hopefully they got him. Uh, we still don't have complete confirmation. Uh, I, I expect confirmation any, mi any minute, any hour now from the Lebanese. Uh, but uh, Hezbollah is not going to sit on their hands after this. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, I mean my view is, <laughs> and I think you know my view. My view is this is unbelievably, um, unbelievably weak. Um, and um, this is not an appropriate response. Uh, they should have done this as well. In a sense, they should have done this at the beginning of the war, not now. He should have been taken out years ago, decades ago. But anytime they knew where he was, he should have been taken out. Uh, so I think this is very weak from Israel. Uh, I think given what's going on in the Northern Front, given the constant attacks on Israel, given the 12 kids that died over the weekend, anything short of Israel basically invading Lebanon uh, and taking southern Lebanon, taking it under Israeli control while eliminating as much of Hezbollah infrastructure and the rest of Lebanon, nothing short of that would have satisfied me. Um, but Hezbollah is going to take this hard. Um, I would expect a, a major uh, escalation now in Hezbollah. This is the tit-for-tat theory of war. Somebody should write a book about this. Tit for tat. Yeah, you know, it's stupid war. Uh, so uh, uh, Israel has basically put its entire air force on, uh, on high alert. This is very similar to uh, when Iran was going to strike Israel, uh, the number of missiles. Uh, you know, Hezbollah is now going to pull out its missile stock, its, its drone stock, and, and target and target, uh, uh, target Israeli, uh, uh, Israeli areas. Haifa, the city of Haifa, where my brother lives and my parents live and uh, where I grew up mostly, uh, is well in the range of, of most of the Hezbollah's weapon systems. And uh, the city of Haifa has been placed on high alert. Uh, hospitals have been placed on high alert, residents told to be vigilant and to prepare to go to area shelters or, or to their safe rooms in their buildings. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a long night for Israelis in Haifa waiting for the sirens to go off and, and seeing what happens. Uh, it, it, it is, I, I do expect the IDF to put airplanes in the air to try to shoot down anything that tries to approach. But as I showed you in the map yesterday, the distance from Lebanon to Haifa is very short. This is not like Iran where you have, I don't know, minutes, hours in some cases, certainly hours when it came to the drones, to prepare to shoot these things down. Here we're talking about seconds to minutes. Um, it's going to be very tough. If it ha We'll see exactly what happens, but it does seem like, um, like you know, a major Hezbollah attack is, is expected in Israel. I don't understand the Israeli strategy. I don't know what they're trying to do. I don't know if they want this major attack so then they can enter Lebanon uh, or they'll just take the attack and, and then pretend it's all over. I, I don't know. I, and I don't get it and I don't understand it. Maybe politically they think that if they let Hezbollah do a major attack, then the Americans and the Europeans will give them cover. I, I, it, it's just insane. I mean, Israel should preempt. They should go in and, and crush them. Uh, so, uh, latest news, I'm just reading the news here. The body of Hezbollah chief of staff, Faoud Shukr, has been transported to a nearby hospital in, the Lib in, in Beirut. A security cordon by Lebanese forces had been placed around the al Rasul al-Azam hospital in Beirut, where the body of the Hezbollah leader, Faoud uh, Shukr, has arrived under heavy guard. So, uh, he's either... He's either very, very heavily injured 
Oh, he's dead. Uh, you know, according to Israeli sources, he's dead. I tend to believe Israeli sources. They wouldn't be securing a hospital just for, you know, if nobody, if nobody significant had gotten hurt. Uh, so I'll keep track of this. I'll let you know what happens. One of the scary, really scary aspects of, uh, of the potential war that we're seeing now potentially develop uh, in Israel um, is, uh, let's see, what was this? Uh, so now the Lebanese are saying, um, um, you know, it's, it's 60 injured and there's a big airstrike on a suburb and they're going to make this out about all civilian casualties and so on. Anyway, um, So, uh, one of the things that really make this scary is that uh, the president of Turkey, Erdogan, has basically stated that if Israel enters Lebanon, the Turks might send the military into Lebanon to help defend uh, Lebanese territory. Uh, now, this is scary for a bunch of reasons. I mean, geopolitically, this creates havoc in NATO. Turkey, of course, is a NATO country. Um, Israel is a NATO ally. You have a NATO country attacking or, or, or attacking a NATO ally. I don't know how that works and what the United States does about it. Turkey has, as a NATO member, has sophisticated NATO weapon systems. They have F-35s, or they have, at least they have F-16s, and they have uh, Abrams tanks, and they, they, you know, they are well-trained military. Uh, well-trained military with, with the best or almost the best of American uh, technology. It's also a very large army. Turkey is a big country, a significantly larger population than Israel. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it could really get ugly and could really, I mean, what if Turkey launches against the U.S., against Israel? Would America participate in shooting down their missiles like they did when they shut down the Iranian missiles? Is this, uh, you know, two NATO countries going at each other? What exactly, you know, so Erdogan's participation, potential participation, is, is, is a real complicating factor here and a real geopolitical risk uh, that the United States, I'm sure, is paying close attention to. And, of course, Israel is because Israel does not want to get into, imagine, uh, Turkey, Iran, Lebanon, Syria, you know, the Houthis, I mean, imagine all of that. That is major. That, that is, survive, you know, Israel, uh, Israel struggling for survival. It really is. For Israel to take on all those militaries all at once, given modern warfare. You know, in the past, I would have said, not a real problem. Iran's not going to send tanks to Israel. It's too far away. Nobody's going to let them cross. But the reality is they don't have to with, with drones and uh, ballistic and cruise missiles and drone, uh, 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 drone swarms. I mean, this is why, God, I get so angry. I mean, I'm trying to hold back. This is why you have to question the strategy of the Israeli government. Why wasn't the target... Suddenly, a few months ago, when, when Iran hit Israel, why wasn't the immediate target after that? Every single drone manufacturing plant in Iran. Why wasn't the target, the taking out of Iran's uh, offensive capabilities vis-a-vis -vis Israel, why wasn't it take out their ballistic missiles, take out their, their, their drones, take out their ability to project force all the way to Israel? So that at least when you face Hezbollah, which was obvious you would have to at some point, Iran is less of a threat because you've taken out, I don't know, 50 percent, 90 percent of their drone and missile capabilities. I, I don't understand the, 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 the unbelievable lack of strategic thinking, lack of long-term thinking, lack of thinking. I mean, I, you know, lack of courage. Israeli government, at the end of the day, a bunch of cowards.
Well, and now we'll see the consequence. We'll see if Hezbollah launches against Israel. Does it launch alone? Does it get support from Turkey? Does it get support from Iran? Um, it, you know, is it not fear of U.S. cutting off arms? No, and it shouldn't be. The U.S. is not going to allow Israel to be destroyed. It's just not. The U.S. is not going to allow that. And nobody can argue after Israel is attacked by 300 drones and missiles that it has a right to do something. And if you don't target civilian targets, you just target drone manufacturing plants, all of them. You target ballistic missile sites and, and launches and all those things. If you just target those kind of targets, the U.S. would have not cut off anything. It just wouldn't have. And, but you know, fear, fear is a powerful emotion. It's a crippling emotion. It's, and, and it's, it's, it's unfortunately a politician's across the whole gamut. It, this is the dominant, when it comes to these kind of things, the dominant emotion. And, um, yeah, I mean, it is, uh, it, it, it is, uh, it, it, and it's suicide. It's suicide. It's suicide. You know, we get the politicians we deserve. I don't know. They get the politicians that deserve. I don't deserve these politicians. So, uh, and and I, I'm doing everything I can not to get them in the future, but I, I just don't see a way out. This is who we have. This is who we continue to have. It's pretty, it's pretty, ba it's pretty bad. Um, so let's see. Let's see what we do now. Let's see what happens now. Um, I, I very much hope that Israel has the capability of knocking down whatever is thrown at it so that it doesn't reach the residential and industrial areas of Haifa. Um, maybe Hezbollah will choose to fire elsewhere in, in order to, because Haifa might be, they believe, might be well protected. I don't know. But uh, we, we will see. Um, we will see. Um, Shazbat's question. I mean, this is a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll get to uh, Shazbat questions. What exactly are Israeli politicians afraid of? What could be worse than their fellow citizens being killed and tortured? <laughs> um, moral condemnation by uh, the intellectuals and their own culture. Uh, 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 you know, when, if, if the, the condemnation of the parents of the Israeli soldiers that would inevitably die when Israel invaded Lebanon, the fear of misstep strategically, that is, we enter Lebanon and, and things go badly, the fear of failure, I mean, last war with Hezbollah did, did not go well for Israel, did not go well for Hezbollah either, but it was not an easy victory for Israel. It was very, very hard. Lots of strategic mistakes. A horrible war. Another one of Netanyahu's pathetic wars. And it was, it was, a, it was devastating. And they didn't come out well, and, and there was a lot of criticism. Indeed, Israel's whole involvement in Lebanon since 1982 has been filled with misery, and, uh, and, and, and political and moral problems. But, you know, they're afraid. They're afraid of their own shadow. These are politicians. You know, they've been focused their entire career on power. And, you know, the generals have to be careful. They don't want to misstep because their careers will be over. They might have political ambitions. You know, I mean, we're talking about not necessarily rational people, who have all kinds of, you know, why is this not working properly? All kinds of, uh, I'd say, uh, uh, irrational ambitions. And there is no, uh, let me move this over here. They, they behave irrationally. And, and, and again, the fear is of themselves. The fear is of their own people. The fear is of so-called making a mistake. The fear is of 
again, moral, moral condemnation, the fears of the intellectuals or, the, or whoever. It's, I, I don't know. It, 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 really is, it really is hard to imagine how they could ignore their fundamental role, their fundamental responsibility, which is, as you say, the protection of their own citizens. Um, be because of uh, because of this, okay, something is off here. All right, uh, give me a second. I have to fix on the Marilyn. Thank you for the sticker, uh, David. We will get to your questions in a minute. Let's see if this w will work. All right, I have to redo it. All right, uh, it will work in the end. All right, so. You know, this is where we are. This is where we are. I mean, the things, as I said, are developing as we speak. So I'll keep, uh, I'll keep an eye on, uh, on the teleprompter, as they say. I'll keep an eye on what's happening and, uh, and, let, you, uh, and let you know as I learn, as I learn uh, new things. Uh, public opinion be damned. Yeah, I mean, that would be nice if people actually held that and actually believed that and actually did it. But we live in a world of narcissistic, second-handed politicians who, 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 want fa who want the favor of the masses, who want the favor of the public. Who, um, uh, so we will see. Uh, 